She's going to take Mr. Jimmy with her. I don't blame her. I mean, she's going to carry it here. Jimmy and I are actually making a, a talking together. And uh, there are some things that he knows a lot better than I do. And, uh, and then there are some things that... Uh, that matter to me especially, and those are the things that I want to talk about. So anyhow, why don't you start out and uh, talk a little bit about the background to the, um, to the Rural Heritage, the new Keeping Rural the Heritage Trust. Yes, it's right, right there. Uh, several years ago, I uh, was asked to join the Shelby County Historical Commission, and the next year I got asked to be the chairman by Ed Williams, and I said yes, and they asked me to come be on Davies Manor, then he asked me to be the president there, and I said yes, and he died. <laughs> and, uh, and then people voted me to be Shelby County historian, and uh, I appreciate that. It's a very honorary job, and I'm very honored to have it. Um, and as we started formatting all what the things we wanted to accomplish in the next few years. One of them is the fact that the Shelby County Historical Commission is formed by resolution only. It does not receive funds, cannot receive funds, that have a bank account by the charter. Uh, and so that kind of restricted some of the things people wanted to do. So particularly what Susan wanted to do, some of her other experiences in West Tennessee and in Shelby County. So we started uh, having a committee, a heritage committee meeting at the Shelby County Historical Commission, and that kind of morphed into another group that Susan chaired, and we asked Paul Matthews, y'all might know Paul Matthews from Barrettville, Rosemark area, and, uh, former Shelby County uh, Historical Commission chairman, and Dexter Muller, and Lauren Beaupre, Nick Gotten, and Sylvester Lewis, and several other people. And we've discussed this for about a year, year and a half now, and formulated some ideas, and what we were concerned about was the, the area, you can see over here in the black outlined area, let's get over here for his video. <laughs> uh, this is Shelby County right here, and of course there's this thing down in the bottom left hand corner called Memphis. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's right here, there's actually, what, seven municipalities that are incorporated in Shelby County. And the area we were concerned about is this shaped area like here, we call it the Crescent originally. And this is area from Meeman Shelby Forest State Park all the way around the north part of Shelby County down to the southeast, the Cayuga Capable area, the rural areas of Shelby County that have been encroached into, grown over. We hate seeing some of these two-lane roads that have trees on both sides, canopy and shade, get widened out to four-lane roads, and you lose half the trees on one side, you know, and we're seeing some of the barns go down or the general stores, or the old school houses or the old train depots. Uh, at the same time, in the last few years, the Memphis and Shelby County Sustainability Office, I guess is what we call it, uh, had meetings and had representatives from 50 different <coughs> groups from four county area, DeSoto, Critton, and Shelby, Tipton, I believe it was, about the green plan, the green print plan, and, and making the whole community come together in a sustainable way. And we at the same time thought Shelby Farms, uh, with all of its new development, about $70 million worth of development going to finish this year and open up, being the center of this whole area, being the, the hub and everything else being the spoke. And you see these red dots here, and these are little communities. And Susan's done a real good job of these dots and making them stick on here. Uh, these are a little connecting the dots is what we call for our crescent area here. And, and started batting around how can we do an inventory of this area of all the old things I mentioned, train depots, roadways, historical properties, historical houses that are identified, they're on the historical register, some that need to be identified, some that need to be preserved, uh, the oral histories, the, the histories that haven't been written down yet that people know, and, and just inventory these areas. What better way to do that is to find representatives in all these areas where all these dots are, like up here at Lucy and Woodstock and in Cuba, who lives up in that area or near Meme and Shelby Forest State Park, Doug Ammons with the Shelby Forest General Store is a great candidate there. And having places along the way that are, are uh, oh, anchor tenants, so to speak, like the Shelby Forest General Store or out here in Barrettville or down here in Cordova at Fisherville or, or down in Cayetteville. And making a, a, some signage and getting modern with it all. Everybody's got a cell phone now, right? And you know about apps and everything. We can't. We don't want to put signs up all over Shelby County identifying everything, but we want to develop a system 
through the app process mm -hmm. uh, that will connect you to, you know, billions and billions of data, you know, on this that we will help develop uh, about our history in Shelby County and try to preserve it. So batting it all around, knocking all the names around, we came up with the Rural Heritage Trust of Southwest Tennessee. And that might seem like it covers Jackson, Tennessee, and Selma and all that too, but really we're talking about Shelby County first, this area right here in the interior of Shelby County, uh, the borderline of Tipton County on the south and Fayette County right here on the east, and then we'll worry about Memphis in a little while. You know, there are areas that got annexed into Memphis in the 60s and the 50s, Frazier and Raleigh, you know, and Whitehaven, Haverhill area, Oak Haven, Westwood, that have 100-year-old histories that aren't being preserved, too, and in great houses there, too. But we're first going to concentrate on what we can on this area, connecting the dots, developing a system of trails and roads uh, that will be good for bikeways. We've talked with uh, Susan and I two years ago, met with Mayor Luttrell, and Tom Needham, the Director of Public Works, who gave us their endorsement to proceed and keep them up to date as we proceeded through the last couple of years. Just today, is this it right here? Just today, Dr. Gotten, we got a letter congratulating us on the successful filing of your charter of articles of organization. So we, we have filed to be a 501c3 nonprofit so we can accept funds or grants or write grants to get monies to come in to go fully to this area right here, the Rural Heritage Trust, which we, we tentatively call the Crescent area, but too many people think that's New Orleans. <laughs> but people like that Crescent idea. And you think about all the wonderful things out here. And our, and our model, or our test pattern area, I guess is what we're calling it, is Mudville Road. Y'all yeah, might know, not know much about Mudville Road. Sounds like Casey at the back. <laughs> uh, but it's out there in Barrettville, Rosemark, and comes across you know, north of Shelby County, all the way to Millington, really, to Kerrville. And we've driven it uh, with the group and identified areas because it's one of those roads that are still there that's basically untouched. You know, Highway 14 is getting ready to be wide, you know, and, and Summer Avenue's, you know, been encroached on, like we say. There's some great roads out there. Uh, Cordova's been kind of annexed parts into Memphis and not, you know. And, and so we figured if we could take Mudville Road and with all the support we have out of Hare out there, which is Historic Archives of Rosemark and Environs in the Rosemark and Barrettville area. You know, they're the, last year they were a community that had three historical markers installed in their community. One from the Tennessee Historical Commission, one from the Shelby County Historical Commission, and one from the Tennessee Civil Wars Trails. Three different agencies recognized historical things going on in that area, and the Tennessee Historical Commission was Bobby Blue Band, the blues singer who grew up born in, in, in Barrettville area. So there's a wonderful history out there at Barrettville. Uh, got three three gorgeous peacocks out there that'll come mess with you if you're ever out there <laughs> in that area. But and Paul Matthews is very strong in that area too. So we're we're kind of keying on that as being our test project. We're going to be looking to other organizations like Bartlett Historical Society or or um, East Shelby County Historical Society over in Cayville, Jane Hooker, Darling, sorry, with the Cordova area. There's people we've identified. There's 15 members of the Shelby County Historical Commission who are submitting. Uh, information. We're developing a map of all these historic areas. Rick Steig with the uh, city, uh, the county IT office has developed a map for us. It'll be an interactive map so you can, you know, pop on an icon here and it'll pop out and it'll say uh, Millington Neville Air Station and what happened there. You know, a paragraph or two about that. You know, and also there's some other things going on. A big solar farm is going to go up in Millington plus the Oklahoma wind wind tunnels coming this way, whatever the wind turbines that that made. So there's going to be some big things going on out there in Millington that kind of falls into our Mudville Road in the area that are interesting as well. The roadsides are neat. Uh, Mudville Road's getting ready to get a new bridge over Big Creek, and as they construct the bridge where the construction site's going to be, the prep it will end up being a little bump out, a little turnoff area, so people can stop and get out or read a sign or something like that in the, in the county government has agreed to cooperate like that with us in any kind of services and helping with some bike lanes or share, shared lanes, share road lanes uh, in the areas. Um, inventory is going to be big, documentation and inventory, getting people to help us because there's nobody, I, I don't know a lot about Millington or I don't know a lot about Cuyahoga, but there's a ton of people that, that live in Cuyahoga, know a lot about Cuyahoga or Bartlett or other places that can help get us the right information. 
And I'll close with two years ago, we had a member of our commission named John McNeary, and uh, he got kind of fired up about cemeteries in Shelby County. He had a list of about 108 at the time on a spreadsheet. I think he's worked that thing up to about 300 now. And he has piled over all this county to some of those neighborhood subdivisions that has a clump of trees over here, and all of a sudden you walk over there and there's two tombstones, you know, those old, old sub, you know, family plots and all that. He's done a magnificent job, and Rick Steve has got those already charted on the, the website. So that type of effort is what we're looking for. You know, people taking it on as a labor of love, getting into it, knowing the subject, and, and nobody knows better about Bartlett than Bartlett Historical Society. Same thing with uh, Millington or Rosemark with Hare, um, Germantown Historical Commission. So that's, that's who we want to enlist and you know, get to cooperate, help us out, and, and preserve our heritage and the charm of the countryside of Shelby County as this community grows, you know. So I'll turn that over to Susan after that. Oh, and thank you, Jack and Sue and Debbie Gilano, right? Gilano, like Jello. 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 like Jello. Jello. Right. Jello. Uh, right now, in the uh, lobby of the Shelby County Administration building downtown, there's a three exhibit cases uh, about the history of Bartlett during the sesquicentennial here. So, Bartlett is in downtown Memphis right now. So it's <laughs> and we're very happy for that. And I thought the April weekend was terrific. Dick was saying, Dr. Gott in a top hat out here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, what the, all the displays in the museum were just terrific. And I really did that upright. And I'm looking forward to coming to the festival in October, too. We want you to. Yeah. yeah. Well, about, I think it was last Friday, um, my son and I decided we were going to wander around the historic district here in Bartlett. And um, I quickly realized something that I've realized in wandering around so many historic towns, which I have done over many years now, partially because I just love, love to do it. And I cannot understand why everybody doesn't love to do it. But uh, anyhow, that's a, another story. But um, I was just really taken with what you've done with the historic district. And I just uh, hope very much that the city will value the historic district and really say that not so much that this kind of development shouldn't come here, but that the historic district will have this type of thing. And um, because it is wonderful to wander around. And what we did is he had his his, uh, his iPhone with him, and we would look at a house, and I would say, yes, I think that's about a 1905, that looks like that generation, as opposed to the 1940s, or the, I mean the 1840s, or the, eight, or the uh, 1880s. You could begin to see different styles and different characteristics that led you to know of the approximate age of a house, and so we sort of had a game of that. And uh, but just the upkeep, the love that is shown in those houses, I think, is one of the things that uh, that is just really most impressive. And I wanted to say that uh, I'm going to be back again, wandering around, uh, um, and I uh, am casing the joint. In, casing the joint, Gil. But um, but I would say that that in issues that you deal with, the pre preservation issues that you deal, I would hope very much that these would be things that would be taken up, that you would say, we've got a problem here with our preservation, with our um, historic area, and bring that, if, it's, if it is historically rural, it would go into the domain of the new trust. The Rural Heritage Trust, and I think the most important thing maybe that the trust can do is to be part of that process where there's strength in numbers. Sometimes one community can't accomplish something, but but when you have a strength in numbers, when when all Southwest Tennessee says this matters, then it, it adds some clout, hopefully, and um, and so I think that. The trust will be taking on certain projects that it values, but it will also hopefully be an entity that 
um, that represents the individual communities and helps and works with them. Um, one of my favorite I'm more involved in saying, okay, this is a vision that we have. Now, what, how do we implement it? How do we get down to the nuts and bolts? I'm kind of the nuts and bolts person of, um, of, of projects. And one of the things that I really like and I have followed for many years is this, this idea that a project is a problem scheduled for solution or an opportunity scheduled for investigation. And I think when you can get it down to this, you have to, you, by necessity, you have to look at first what are the problems and then what are the opportunities. Often, uh, entities, nonprofits address, they come together because there is a problem. And it takes more creative thought to look at the opportunity side <clears throat> and uh, really saying these are the problems and we want to address these things is a good bit more easy than looking to see, um, uh, looking at the opportunity side. But it is the opportunity side that excites <coughs> us most. But I would like first to just go over some of the problems because the problems are pretty enormous that we face in this county. Um, first, we're losing our history, and that I don't even need to describe that because you already know that. Um, I took a trip, uh, sort of the circumferential trip in northern Shelby County with the idea that I was going to note and take photographs, etc., of, of historic buildings and, and special places, and I was really very distressed at what I learned uh, that just how much we have lost. Um, suburbanization is changing the face of our rural countryside very rapidly. This is not necessarily bad, but if we do not have a voice speaking up for what we want to preserve, it is very serious. Um, Roads. We have some of the most beautiful roads, and um, and the roads are threatened, perhaps no, by no other entity more than MLGW. <laughs> um, if we don't speak out <clears throat> when a road is threatened, then MLGW will see to it that that road is destroyed. And all you need to do, I invite you to go out onto what was once beautiful Canada Road. North of, Can north of Highway 70 on Canada Road is perilously close to losing some of its uh, tree cover, its old tree cover. But take a look at what MLG and, mm. and W has done along Canada Road. You know, just sliced right through and cleared everything. Did anybody stand up and say no? Why are you doing this? Is there not an alternative to this? No. No voices. Um, elders are dying out. Uh, one of the things that I have felt, I live in an old house in, in, in Shelby. Go ahead and, and say Brunswick, okay? Brunswick. Brunswick. I live in Brunswick, <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, and one of the... Uh, things that, that bothers me is that the elders are dying and their records are going with them. And one of the things that I feel personally when I travel around is I hear the voices. I can go to Eads and I can hear voices, you know, I can hear stories because I love history and I'm aware of what the farms were like and what tenant farming was about and what to, to an extent what slavery was about. And, um, and so it's those voices, but the voices are dying out. And uh, they're, they're black African-American voices, they are white voices, they are any number of different entities that, uh, that have stories and the elders are dying. 
Um, the biggest problem may be that history is not valued here. And I think one of the reasons is that it is a very complicated history. That's my phone, and we're just going to ignore it. I meant to turn it off and didn't. It's a complicated history, uh, certainly racially complicated, and I think that's one of the reasons, potentially, that, uh, that, that we have some of the, just people don't want it. They don't want to talk about history because, because it's complicated. But that's part of, uh, one of the things I have realized is that all people share, rural people share a whole lot more in common than they have differences. The differences were economic and the earnings and things of this sort that needed, need to be addressed. But, but the experiences, a um, lot of experiences were so similar, whether it was the church experience, school experiences were not the same by any means because one group went by wagonette and the other group walked and sometimes miles and uh, to get to school. So um, anyhow, they're, they're, it's a complicated history. Um, there has been, believe it or not, no countywide inventory of historic buildings and places. And this surprised uh, the database people for the county, and it's one reason that I think we've had the support of the mayor and Tom Needham and others is because for the first time there were talking about a, a, t a comprehensive inventory of the Crescent area that surrounds Memphis. And then last problem uh, is really the first one I talked about. No, no organized group has been speaking up for preservation uh, of historical sites and places in rural southwest Tennessee. And as, I, as Jimmy has been talking about, that's what we're about. So when we turn to the opportunities, first we need to remember that um, the rural Mid-South continues to be an extraordinarily scenic place, although endangered. Um, many of the villages now, or a number of the villages, are doing really good work in oral interviews, uh, books, and other things of this sort. They're looking at their resource base, their historic resource base, and they're saying, let's preserve, let's Let's care for this, just as Bartlett is doing. Um, and so the issue is, can we um, create ways to make it easier for this process to take place? And that is what we're trying to do here with the, with the trust, is to say, how, what steps can we take? And um, the first step Jimmy described the second step um, I want to talk, to, to engage you really with, and that is we will be setting up or are setting up what we'll probably call something like this, a documentation and inventory group. And what this group will do is on a holistic basis is with representatives from the 25 or 30 little communities, red villages, <laughs> the red dots, <laughs> the red dots, um, of which some are already fallen off, and, and uh, but it's pretty comprehensive. MLG and Duffy got there, right? Uh, MLG and got there, exactly. But um, <clears throat> What we'd like to do is to work toward maybe having two, three, four people from each community. And we must be sure that in the selection of people that it is representative of the full story of a community. There's been way too much white history at the expense of African American history and uh, to our loss. And, um, and so it's important that, that, that there be the ability to have a, a balanced perspective. Maybe not everybody has the same perspective, but together there is a, 
there is a balanced perspective. Um, and then if we can bring together that group of people and we'd end up probably with a group of 75 to 100 people if we just have three from each community. It would be crossroads communities, the little, little communities like Macedonia. If you've ever been up to Macedonia? And uh, you live in Macedonia? No, I lived about three miles away from it. Mm -hmm. Gratitude. Oh, <laughs> gratitude, yes. I love gratitude, that church there is. There's just so much. I mean, you, know, you can just get started talking about it and get so thrilled. But um, I think the what I would ask is uh, if you are amenable, if, if there are maybe three or four people that would really like to kind of represent Bartlett on this, um, it would be it would be super to have to know who would like to do it. This and is not an altar call tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to walk down. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> give, it, no, give it some it's, thought, it's, it's and good. and uh, Nick will. Uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick will be the coordinator. Nick, Nick, Nick and Kevin can uh, can can oversee this uh, the representation that that we do have good representation. In closing, I'd just like to pass these out. Uh, this is from my trip, and I asked Ian, my son. <laughs> it's Trish's house. Yeah, no. Trish, it's your house. Trish, this is your house. We saw this, and Ian said, this is amazing. My son, my middle yes. son is Ian. And he said, this is amazing. He said, uh, this, is a, this is an old house. We could tell that it was, and it doesn't have any front door. Well, it really does. It does. <laughs> in the new part. It does in the new part. Yeah. And, um, and, and so, anyhow, um, we're using this as an example, but... Y'all need to translate that Latin, by the way. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. The, the Latin is just a placeholder. But I realized today, and I think Kevin may have been involved in this pretty heavily, and I, this is the first time I've seen this, but we could take this information on the, on the houses and just simply put them, this is where we would. Kevin has sent me some information. Yeah, the, 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 I have a, bun I have a bunch more to do. Where the Latin too. is, is yeah. where there would be the appropriate description. <laughs> and, um, and there may be some other information that would be helpful. You'll notice that, that we do have included the uh, the G uh, GPS. GPS. GPS the GPS yeah. I was going to GIS in my mind and they did have a door originally it was between it was right there in the middle yeah <laughs> well we need to describe that there was a door there was a door that yes, yeah. so yes. um, <laughs> anyhow eventually what I think would in spite of the fact that iPhones are very popular and and most people go online in today's world, I still love paper. And uh, would like to see us put together a book that we can, there will be the Bartlett section and the Ede section and the Collierville section, etc. That would be very much like this, with a, a photograph potentially of the old house and the new house, the house today and the house, if there is a an old photograph, and then um, a description of, of it, and then also bringing in, 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 at the same time, a description of some theme um, that could be relevant, like the school, um, uh, or the plank road, um, the, the depot. There needs to be a sign for the depot where it was. And um, and so and then we can take a look at this information. And then we can start to think what we could do for it, do with it. I do want to bring to your attention that in two, in uh, 2019 is the Shelby County bicentennial, and our personal interest is to see a bicentennial that is really a celebration of our history, not just some sort of event-filled calendar, 
but is a celebration of rural history as well as Memphis's history. And so perhaps this book that we would all be putting together would be the first step in, in being able to communicate that uh, to, the, to the county. And I'm happy to answer any questions of Jimmy, too. Mm -hmm. Well, specifically, what would the little group, say, for Bartlett do? They would take pictures of historic buildings and houses and then write up a little history. Um, I Fortunately, think we already have a you lot have of it. You're a well on the way. Yes. Yeah, sharing it. Um, there's sort of two sides, and I'm going to sound like what I am and was, and that's a history teacher. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a people's history, and then there is sort of the gloss. This is what happened when, and so-and-so was the mayor. But the people's history includes the plank road. It includes what goes on, what went on in the farmhouse. How about the mules? What were the barns like? This is all people's history. And that's where I think that eventually you might want to cover some of these things. Uh, in the, in, the, in the, 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 there's a book that was written, and I don't have it, I have it in my portfolio, uh, that, uh, that has been done on the history of Bartlett. Johnson Smith. You know? You know yeah, yeah. Johnson Smith's book. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And um, that book I'm going to use for any number of purposes, but one of them is the Plank Road and what was the road like? You know, what is the history of this particular road? Uh, the depot, and what, what was the function of the depot here? It was largely people gathered in the evening when the train came in to get the news. You know, this is people's history. So, so I would, and, and, and you would not be alone on this process. I mean, we can talk. <laughs> You know about what we would do, and uh, and and your ideas and other ideas from the outside, and so it's also very important what Kevin's discussion. doing right now too. Technology is mm -hmm. on our side now uh -huh. more than ever before, and so accessible to people. But just having somebody like him yeah. with a camera, and he did a real good job at our historical display opening downtown. Uh, wow, you know. But to have that and record people, like you say, elders. Mm -hmm. If they're willing to talk, uh, we already have some of those mm -hmm. interviews. Yes, yes, we do. We need to do more. We oral visits. Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing everybody business. needs to do this. And you have a perfect place right here to invite people yes. to do an oral history. And then there are people, some people like um, um, Darlene Sawyer, who has is doing oral <coughs> histories, and she would be very happy to come and talk about how to do oral history. We tried to get her a couple times and haven't so, been successful. Okay. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll get her for August for you. We'll help you with that. Well, because of illness and different yeah. things like That's that. Too we, too we, she's been scheduled a couple times. Okay. Had well, she did have a bad illness. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. she's, she's sincere. She's really I know. We, we yeah. She's very good. Okay. Yeah. And another person is um, in Carterville. Jane Hooker. Mark Jane, no. I'm thinking. Oh, but, um, uh, Laura Todd. Oh, Laura, Ashley Carver. Laura, Laura, I said. Laura Todd with Main Street, Cairo, or Ashley Carver with the Morton Museum. We, Laura Todd handles Main Street, Cairoville, and it's, she's done a fabulous job of it. What she wants to do is to kind of draft a book. You don't have to be a Main Street community to do Main Street things. And she felt like it would be possible to draft a little pamphlet or something, and be able to share that, uh, some of the Main Street ideas and principles and things, that, how to do them, what to do, and how and when and why and where. So um, anyhow, that was a long Did you know that we do have fairly new historical markers, the Trail of Tears went mm -hmm. down the street yes. road mm -hmm. from the uh, it's been researched. And Green been Swisher. We have. Uh, sort of, yeah, we actually have the down at Hill Street Landing. We have the graphic marker for the water route down there uh, on the river bank and go into a land route, breaking this out of pyramid. Sometimes yeah. so. we complete that. 
we not only have this organization, the Historical Society, it's a society, mm -hmm. we've done most of the research that we have, but at the same time, in 1999 or 2000, when I was at the city, we, we created and adopted a, a historic preservation ordinance. So we have that organization. It's, it's, it's staffed with the, with the committee. So oh, the city? Somebody the wants city to take, has somebody a staff? Somebody wants to take a tree down <laughs> within this historic district that they, they determined, well, people voted for it. Yeah. But it's established legally. Mm -hmm. That committee has the power to say, yes, you can take down that tree, or no, you can't take down that tree. Or if you take it down, this is the way to take it down. So, so, so on and so forth. And I believe that committee or commission has the inventory of all the homes in this district already. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's the head of that? We might have him come to see him. <laughs> does it change every are year, you, or is that a... Are you, are you over it? it? No. <laughs> I, I was on it for a while, but... And I, I was the one that wrote the no, ordinance. No, no. no. Oh, I I well, the chairman <clears throat> changes their volunteers on the committee. I'll but find... Yeah, these are... It them. would probably be carried These are appointed. Right? These are appointed. They, may, they only meet four times a year, unless it's something drastic. Okay. Two then... Years. But the, then we the, may the be talking about something different. You, are you talking about the historic district rather than the yeah. historic commission? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. well, the historic commission is responsible for the, okay. the area. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. that has nothing to do with people. Right. It's strictly buildings and, oh. and trees and so on and so forth. Very important. Mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. that I'm sure you did. Okay. Any other questions? But anyway, that, that organization probably ought to be working with this one. Mm -hmm. Let me thank Susan thank you, Jones. Susan. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 When they yeah. nominate me for chairman, yeah. Yeah. Susan kind of went, who's this Jimmy Ogle guy? She <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking out for a while. That's the way she is. It just, it, all, all questions are good questions. She really thoroughly documents things. And thank you, Kevin, for being on the Assembly County Historical Commission. Dr. Gotten as well. Jack Coleman and Dr. Gotten for being on the Davies Manor Association as well, too, which is in Bartlett, you know. Uh, we we, we kind of get around to see each other every now and then, you know. Once a month. Usually. Usually, yeah. Thank all you. right. Uh, thank you.